Hey guys, Private Jack here. I'm going to show you a quick little camera trick here uh, that's going to help you out in your animations, editing. Uh, it involves the view camera, an empty, a constraint, and a lock. And basically, if I pick up this particular model right now and I grab it and I move it through space, the model moves through space. If I am am animating and I want to be able to focus on the animation and the bone rotations and that kind of thing, if I try to animate through something like this where the model is moving through the world, it's really difficult because not only do I have to look at the rotation of the bone, but I have to look at the location of the land and all the rest of that good stuff. When animating, it would be a lot easier if we could actually focus on the bone, and as we move the model, the land moves and the model stays center screen. Well, this little trick I'm going to show you right now does exactly that. It's good for editing as well because it's going to involve being able to focus on a bone or on a vertex or if you're weight painting on the bone that you're actually weight painting for and we're able to bounce around between bones simply by changing a constraint. So with that let's get into it. It's really simple, really quick. First off I said it involves an empty. Uh, before I go there I'm using Blender 2.90. This particular trick works all the way back past Blender 2.79 because everything is pretty much all in the same place, okay, uh, between the different uh, variations of the program. So we're going to be using the property panel, we're going to be using the uh, transform menu, and that is about it. So let's get on with it. I said it's going to use an empty and empty spawn wherever the 3D cursor is. Okay, so currently my 3D cursor is here, the world origin. Uh, to, if you want to go back to the world origin, it doesn't matter where you put this empty, uh, the constraints are going to move it to where it needs to be anyway. But if you want to get back to the world origin, shift S and cursor to world origin for Blender 2.8 and 9 and is cursor to origin uh, in 2.79. So, cursor to world origin, I'm going to press shift A, and it's the same for all versions, and I'm going to come over here, select an empty, and I'm going to create a sphere. Okay, there's my sphere. This is a little tiny guy, and what I want to do is I'm going to scale it up just a bit by pressing S and pulling back on the mouse. What I want this thing to do is that if it's encompassing something it's going to be visible so I know wh what I'm actually looking at. Okay once that's done I'm going to make sure I have the, sp uh, the sphere selected and I'm going to come over here to the properties panel. I'm going to come down here to the constraint object constraint tab and I'm going to click on add object constraint. The constraint that I want to use is a copy location constraint. So now that I've got that set up, I'm going to turn off the Z axis for a minute because it's a secret right now. Okay, so I'm going to turn off that Z axis, and the rest of the setup is I'm going to leave the target and the owner at world space, and for the target, I'm going to select the armature. Now watch what happens as soon as I select the armature. Nothing. Why did nothing happen? simply due to the fact that this particular animation has the root transform bone that stays at the root uh, at the world origin okay so the main actual bone for the uh, the this model is still here on the root trans uh, on the the uh, world origin now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a bone and it doesn't matter what bone you select this is the bone you want to concentrate on so for me, what I want to do is I want to watch the bit pelvis as it goes through the animation. So I'm going to type in pelvis here, hit enter, and watch what happens to the cursor or to the uh, empty now. Poof, it disappeared. Well, where the heck did it go? It is now on 
under the BIP pelvis on the X and Y location uh, of where the BIP pelvis bone is. And if I move the animation, that empty is going to move with the animation. Okay, so let's put the animation back at zero, or at one. We're back on the root transform pretty much. We're in line with the BIP pelvis. Now, let's say I want to watch this foot bone because I know I've got a problem here in the actual foot. The other thing is, is that when I move the, uh, the, the animation now, oh no, the model is still moving through the world. But before we go there, what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on what this actually does for uh, the actual empty. If I change this here to the foot left bone, the cursor is going to move directly below the foot left bone. If I change it to the foot right, it's going to move over there. Okay, but I said I wanted to have the world th move through the actual model and not the model through the world. The way I set that up is coming up here into the actual transform menu, going to view, and this view lock, I'm going to lock it to the empty. Now watch my camera jump. My camera is now looking directly at that empty. And if I rotate, it doesn't matter how I rotate, the rotation is going to be based on that sphere. It's the medium point of the sphere. Okay? So now, not only am I rotating around the area that I want to watch, but if I move the actual model now, the model stays in place and the world moves through the model. Okay, the model stays centered based on where that empty is. Okay, now for the little trick about the Z axis. Over here, if I turn on that Z axis constraint, that curse or that sphere is going to move to the selected bone. Now I'm watching the actual bone itself. So as I walk through the animation, I can see how that deform is happening. If I'm in object mode, and I pick up the, uh, the, the actual model, grab, the world moves instead of the model, and basically I have everything that I want to watch. So let's put this constraint back. Oh, where did it go? Well, the constraint is on the empty, so you have to have the empty selected. We're going to go to the foot left, because I got that problem in the toe bone. I'm going to paste through the actual animation. I got a bad deform here. I can go into weight paint mode and fix that up. And right there, I've got that bad bend in the toe. The toe is bent the wrong way. So now I can come in here, I can work on that toe bone and propagate the, uh, the, the changes down through the chain of the animation. So that is how I actually get this thing to work. And if I want to watch the model move through the world, let's go back here to the start. All I have to do is turn off the constraint. And now my model moves through the world instead of the world moving through the model. Okay, so that's a little trick for you. Put it in your blender hat, and happy blending. With that, I say Private Jack out.